And our show today is science magic. And we're going to show you some stuff that looks like magic. But we want you to tell us what you think is actually happening. And I'm going to start with a little bit of Zoom magic. I'm, we spotlighted the, ca the uh, camera on my laptop. And I have a little cloak of invisibility. Here's a Harry Potter thing going on. What? There I am. There I am. I'm making myself invisible with my cloak of invisibility. Oh, yeah. I see people are liking that one. And you folks want to know how we did this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really becoming invisibility, invisible, although that would be awesome. Here's what we do. I made my background be the little shop of physics. And then I, I did a green screen. There's a little button, choose a virtual background, and then choose your green screen. And I made my green screen color be this color of this piece of fabric right here. And now you can see what's actually happening. I'm just waving around a piece of green fabric. But what you see on my laptop is you see me vanishing. And so that's something you folks can try. And that's our first piece of Zoom magic. And wait a minute, I made myself disappear, but Brenna is gonna make other things disappear. Over to Brenna. All right, so here I have this frog that somebody in Little Shop of Physics 3D printed. And I also have this kitty and my water bottle. And I'm gonna make all three of these things disappear. So, if I take my frog and I hold him on my hand and I move him off to the side. It's gone! Vanishing frog! Not the frog! It's not the frog! The frog is too cute! Bring it back! Oh, he's okay, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Same thing with my kitty. I can move him oh off my gosh. to the side. And the kitty is vanished. And he's gone. And the kitty has vanished side. again. Bring it back. We don't want to see cats vanish. There we go. Me either. Too I, cute. I like my cats. Too at home. cute. And finally, my water bottle. I can move it off to the side. Oh my gosh. I can come back. And the reason this happens is because Zoom has this algorithm that recognizes my person, but it does not recognize objects that do not look like people. So I tried this with Barrington, and Barrington looks enough like a person. <laughs> That he did not disappear. <laughs> Barrington doesn't vanish. Our giant <laughs> stuffed bear stays with us. Awesome. And now Maude, I think, is, a, is ready to make parts of herself vanish, is what I'm seeing. We're just going to use and abuse Zoom's algorithm today. <laughs> and so here I've got... And what are you going to make disappear first? I don't know. Should we go with my hands I, first? I'm going with the head. What do you think? Hands or head? What do folks hands think? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Yeah, Should we make her hands disappear or her head disappear first? What are we seeing? Hands or head? I have a feeling I know the answer. Oh, head, yeah. head, head. <laughs> head is yeah, way out in front. Head okay, Mom. Let's okay. see the head vanish. All righty. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. It did. Your head turned into like a little tie-dyed monster head. That is kind of awesome. It's terrifying. <laughs> it is kind of terrifying. You look like a tie-dyed Q-tip mod. A tie-dyed Q-tip. <laughs> I like mod as the tie-dyed Q-tip. That is kind of an I awesome thing. I tie-dyed Q-tip. All right. We're going to try this. I can't see what I'm doing, so we'll see if I can even get... It's looking pretty good, and now your oh, hands are disappearing, and your hands... Now you're like a three-pronged tie-dyed Q-tip is what you're looking like now. This is kind of awesome. A tri-tip. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is fantastic. We lost parts of mod. And somebody wrote in here, green screen, gloves, and hat. Oh, somebody's figured this one out. This isn't magic. This is using Zoom's algorithms, as Brenna said. We're working them today. Let's see what's actually happening. There it is. And Maude has that chroma key green gloves and <laughs> balaclava on. And we can make them appear to vanish by using Zoom's green screen feature. Now, we're going to show you some other stuff that, honest to goodness, this stuff is going to look like magic. And we want you to tell us what you think is happening when you see this stuff in action. Okay? So first off, I have a question for people. I got this big balloon here. I got this big balloon right here. And I got this container. And how many balloons this size can I fit in this container? How many do you think I can fit in here? I take a balloon this size. How many can I fit? Man, I, I'm not even sure I can fit one. Go ahead and put a number in the chat. How many do you think I can fit in there? 
Somebody says two, two, five, nine, ten. Somebody's got some faith in me. I'm telling you. And here's the thing. This container is actually pretty small. There's a lot of balloons inside here. And honest to goodness, I don't know how many there are, but I'm just going to pull some out and see how many are in there. There's one and two and three <laughs> and four and five. Oh my goodness. And six and seven and eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Looks like I got an even dozen in there. And look at <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> And they're all coming back to life. Oh my gosh, that looks crazy. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Whoa. <laughs> crazy, crazy and loud. Oh my gosh. Crazy and loud and messy. And all these balloons that you see on the table were inside that container. And I'll show you how we do this. If I take a balloon and I put it inside here, watch what happens to it. Here goes a balloon going into the container. And it doesn't seem like it should fit, but what's happened to the balloon is it's getting smaller. And I want somebody to tell me what you think might be inside the container that is making that magic happen. Because it doesn't look like the balloon should fit at all, but in fact, it fits handily. What is it? Oh, someone says it's cold like ice. You folks are too clever. <laughs> I tell you, you kids, they're just teaching you too much these days. Too you are right. It is cold us. like ice. What's inside here? It's actually liquid air. And the air inside this balloon actually turns liquid. And then when I pull it back out again, it warms up and it boils and the balloon will resume its original size. And we can do this over and over and over again. We can shrink these balloons and let them resume their original size. And say it doesn't seem like I should be able to make a balloon fit inside here. But in fact, I can, because what I do is I make the air smaller. And I make the air smaller by turning it from a gas into a liquid. 12 balloons inside that container. Oh, and somebody wrote nitrogen. Heck yeah, liquid nitrogen. That's it. Good on you folks. And we're going to make some other things disappear and reappear. I think Maude's got something for us. Yep, so I've just got this little yellow piece of paper here, which I have written on it, a sad face and 2020. And well, I don't want either of these things on this piece of paper anymore because we, we don't like sad faces or 2020. So we're just going to make them disappear. There we go. Alrighty. And then if I just take... And it is gone. Oh my gosh, it's completely vanished. It but, has completely vanished. But can you make it come back? You know what? Yes. Because <laughs> what I, you know, maybe, maybe we want to give 2020 another chance. So I'm going to take that piece of paper. And there we go. Wait a minute. It's a happy face and it doesn't say 2020. Looks like it says... 2021. 2021. 2021. We turned a sad 2020 into okay a happy 2021 <laughs> is what we looked like. Oh it my gosh. I not want to come back. Oh, and some little scamp said she had a new piece of paper under the table. Oh, you folks are too clever for us. <laughs> it's still gone on the other oh piece of paper. Oh my gosh. Though, you are <laughs> right. You are right. But something that's kind of awesome about this paper, the paper's yellow, but watch what happens when Maude sprays it with some of that Windex window cleaner. When she sprays it, Yellow paper plus blue Windex equals red? What? This is a special piece of paper that changes color with acids and bases. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So that's some appearing and disappearing stuff. And I'm going to show you another appearing and disappearing thing. And I want, this is one where I'm going to put water in a cup. And I'm going to move cups around. And let's say i got three cups here. Okay, three cups. And I'm going to take some water and I'm going to pour it into this central cup right here. Pour some water in there. Now I want, what you folks, I want you to do is I want you to watch the cups. And I'm going to move them quickly. 
I'm going to do some sleight of hand here. So keep an eye on the cups, man, because I am, I am seriously working this. I am seriously working this. My sleight of hand is impressive. Look at that. That it is, Brian. That's too fast. <laughs> I can't even keep up. What, 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 what? And the question is, where is the water? Which cup is the water in? Is it on the left or the right or the middle? What are folks thinking? Oh, I'm seeing middle. Middle. Oh, folks are saying the middle. Are you sure it's in the middle? Are you sure it's there? It's not there. And it's not here. It's not here. What? 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 That water vanished. Somebody said none. Oh, ho, 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 ho. somebody thinks I'm way trickier than I actually am. Now, you folks said the water was in the middle. Let's take a look at that middle cup. And if I give it a bit of a squeeze and a bit of a shake, what you can see, the water is in the middle, but it just turned into a different form. It turned into this gel. And there's a little powder that we use to turn it into a gel. And if you wanted to try this, this is the powder that's in diapers. And it's meant just to bind up a lot of water. So this is the little powder that goes inside diapers. And we just used it to do a little bit of science magic. Next up, what do we got next? Oh, heavens to Betsy. I think we're over to Brenna, who's going to make something reappear. Alrighty. So I have this spring and I want to use this spring for a project, but it's not very springy anymore. Uh oh, Brenna, you broke the spring. Oh, but if I concentrate on it real hard and I kind of... Oh my gosh, it's shrinking. Maybe. It's shrinking. Let's see if I can do it. And it's kind of like going back as it was. It's like all by itself. Look at that thing shrink. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it. I got to... Hold it and concentrate. Yep, I'm, I'm concentrating, guys. Let's see, concentrating. Maybe if I put it in both hands. Oh, look at that. Now, and if you stretch it, is it springy now? Yep, springy. it sure is. So it wasn't springy and now it is? Yeah, so this metal here is called nitinol. And we've used this on a previous show, but this is a spring. If I cool off this nitinol in a glass of ice, which I have right here, and then I pull it out again, and I stretch it, it's not springy. But if I heat it up with, say, this heat pack here, in my hands, it's going to regain oh its gosh, original shape. Oh gosh, there it goes, shape. shrinking back to its original shape. Look at that. Here we go. And once it shrinks back to its original shape, it regains its springy properties. Awesome. So it made springiness disappear and reappear. That is kind of awesome. All right, now I got a little glass vial here, a little tiny glass vial. Oh, except there's a problem with this particular glass vial. Um, I, think, I think I fear for its safety. I'm going to hit it with a hammer. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that did bad things to it. Oh, now it's all broken into a whole bunch of shards of glass. But I have this magic liquid that I can use to reconstitute it. So I have a glass of magic liquid. It's magic science liquid. And I'm going to pour this, all the glass in here. Get it all. i got to need it all because I need it all together. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like stir this liquid around a little bit. Stir, stir, stir. And then I can reach in and pull it out. There it is. Whoa! Reconstituted. I've made it whole again with my magic science liquid. That I don't is kind like of this awesome. magic science liquid. <laughs> now, do you think that actually, was there one in there? Oh, you little skeptics. <laughs> you little skeptics. You think there was already a piece of glass in there? Check it out. If I take this tube and I put it under the, under, inside this liquid, let's see if I can get a close-up of this. So here's a, here's a little container of liquid, and I got this glass vessel. If I put it inside here, and I completely submerge it and fill it up with oil, it vanishes. And what happens is the index of refraction of the liquid is the same as the index of refraction of the glass, if I use those words. And it looks like it's not there. So there was sort of a secret piece of glass which was inside there, which you weren't seeing. And all the little broken bits, yeah, they're still, they're still in there. I can't reconstruct it. It's not a magic thing. You are too 
clever for us. And now Maud. We're over to Maud. Are we? Oh no, sorry. We're over to <laughs> sorry, I'm completely We're over to the other Maud over here on the other side of me. And yeah, Ma, the and other Maud. Bre Brenna's gonna show us something. You should do this Christmas time, setting out the table, putting the fancy glassware out. Maybe you should ask first because if you don't do this correctly, it could go very bad. So I'm going to fill up some of my cups if you're and not magical, my beaker. It work. I have a straw in here, which I will use later, um, with some colored water. I think I'm going to pour more of this in the beaker because the beaker is not very full. And if I stand up, and I do this properly. I don't know. There it is. Awesome. And she yanked the tablecloth out from underneath the glasses. So all I'm doing is I'm, re I'm moving so fast that friction can't accelerate these glasses enough to pull them over. Awesome. Awesome. And so that's a thing that looks like magic, but kids could try that with some parental supervision, I'm thinking. I think so too. And we did this in Little Shop of Physics. One of the things we like to do is go bigger. We did this on a giant scale on a sunny day up on our patio, up on our third floor. And we have a lot of glassware and a tablecloth. And we dropped this weighted stuffed bear and it yanks that tablecloth out from under the glasses. So if you want to do this and really impress people, I'm saying set your table for the holidays and go big. Go big. Oh, yeah. That is an awesome, awesome thing. And now, Maud has a little demonstration. And that one used something about, like, kind of an inertia thing. And Maud has got a little thing she's going to show us. And this is something that looks like magic. This is kind of awesome. She's got a hoop and a three liter bottle and a dowel. And Maud, tell us what you're doing. I'm just balancing the hoop on top of the bottle so it doesn't move and I've got the smaller wood cylinder at the top directly above the opening of the bottle and if I'm magical enough and if I move <laughs> quickly enough we'll just see what happens. All right Maude let's see it and the thing goes in the bottle that was awesome and kids could you could do this yourself that's just an embroidery hoop and a bottle and a mm -hmm. block, right? Let's see a oh, yeah. slow motion version of this. Let's see what's slow motion, see what's actually happening. Maude takes that thing, yanks it. Look at that thing goes straight down in. Oh my gosh, looks like magic. Does look like magic, but that is inertia at work, my friends. That is an awesome, awesome thing. And now Brenna's got a balance trick for us. I do. So I have this tube and I'm just going to balance this tube on this box. So if I do that and I balance it, it's balanced very, it's very nicely, Brenna. Out, but oh, and then it falls out. What? Oh, what? What? Come on, tube. What are you doing? Come on. I had it for a second. Let's see if I can do it again. So we're balancing the tube, and it's it's hanging out oh. very handily, looking good. This tube, Brenna. Brian, I I just don't <laughs> think I can get it to go. I just I I don't think I can do it. Oh, somebody wrote center of gravity. They said there's a weight. Oh my gosh, these uh, folks are too clever. So this tube is filled with motor oil, which is super viscous and really dense. Oh my gosh. And when I hold the tube like this, all the oil goes to one side. If I put that over here, the center of gravity is balanced. Once that oil starts to level back out again, that balance goes away. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So you folks Poor figured kids. out, even somebody even used center of gravity. You scamps, you folks are too clever for us. <laughs> All right, next up, we're gonna do some levitation. Over to Maud, who is gonna make a light bulb float in the air. I am indeed. And levitation's magic, right? Levitation's absolutely magic, for sure. All right, I have turned it on so we know that it's a real light bulb and that it is indeed plugged in. Oh yeah, it's. And there's that light bulb floating in the air. It is literally floating in the air. And somebody says it's a gust of air. Oh my gosh. You are right. Air pressure. Tag on it. These we kids are too these clever. Shows anymore, Brian. We they're, can't sneak anything past rush. them. <laughs> <laughs> these little scamps. And Maud, or sorry, the other Maud, Brenna, can do this. <laughs> I don't have a name. 
Amazing. Unless I keep doing this. <laughs> Brenda can do this with a marble, which That's is a marble is glass and really heavy. Yep, so I have a glass marble and you can probably hear it. And if I use an air compressor. Whoop, whoops. It fell down. It's in my It's tray, coming back. Though. There it is. There we go. Whoop. Let's see. She's got it. Floating in the airstream from the air compressor. It's like a smaller light bulb, someone said. Oh my gosh, you <laughs> folks, these folks are so clever. But what if we decided not to go smaller, but we went bigger? We have a 12 foot beach ball in the Little Shop of Physics. And we took that 12 foot beach ball and we got this giant blower from facilities. And you can see I'm leaning into the blower and you can see how intense the air is from that blower. They use this to clear the leaves off the oval. And when they get that thing Blowing to the side, we had a 12-foot beach ball. Same story. Check that thing out. Levitating a 12-foot beach ball out on the oval, which was an awesome, awesome thing. Looks like magic, but it's a science thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now we're going to levitate some more things. I think Brenna has a way of levitating some tinsel, which is something that's of the season. Yeah, so I have this um, bright star tinsel. And we kept saying bright star or die because you have to use this tinsel. And I have a scarf and I have a balloon. And so I've already made some loops of tinsel. And somebody said the tinsel is light. Oh yeah, that's it, that's yes. it. Yes, yes it is. It is light. And they use this for icicles on Christmas trees. So if I rub this balloon with my scarf, Somebody's saying friction. Oh my gosh, they're on to it. And you know what friction, what she's doing with the balloon? What's she making happen? Static. Oh my gosh. Yes, you guys are too smart. Oh my gosh, these folks are too are clever. Too and so smart. Brenna took that Oops. plate and charged it up. Oh, she's losing the balloon. And puts tinsel in there. Well, let's see if it'll... Oh, there it goes. It jumps. Tinsel is jumping. Let's see, I might need to charge my balloon. And a somebody bit has more. written tinsel will stick to the balloon, which in fact it will. That is a thing. Woo, woo. And there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you so can using make this some static levitate. to levitate some tinsel. And then Maud has a way of using static electricity to levitate some styrofoam balls. Yes. Yep, so I've just got a little plastic container in here and then three styrofoam balls. And I've got some fuzzy fabric here and I'm just gonna oh my gosh and fuzzy fabric I'm feeling I'm thinking somebody says static doggone it you kids are too clever we can't sneak we anything can't, past these kids teach I guess anymore. we don't need to do these shows anymore oh my gosh know all the physics oh my gosh and now I've got levitating styrofoam balls awesome and that was just an extra container left over from something and some styrofoam balls from the craft store and a little bit of fuzzy fabric. And we got some levitation going on and they are absolutely right. That's a static electricity thing going on. Now, we are gonna, Brenna's got one more thing to show you. And this is one, we want you to tell us what's happening here. Brenna, I see, looks like you got a clothesline, some things hung on the clothesline. I do, I have my clothes, uh, these bendy <laughs> straws. This is all I wear, guys. If I take this card, I just want you to watch closely. Wait a minute, you went right through the piece of string. How are you able to do that? Well, I don't know, why don't you tell me? Somebody said magnet. What? Oh, come on you guys. The rope is already cut and there's magnets in it? Too we smart. have a spy. Oh my gosh, they're right. It's a magnet in the <laughs> string and it makes, there's a hole in it but it's held together by those magnetic forces. Now, we're gonna show you really, really quickly a whole bunch of stuff that you can try at home in our last five minutes here. Brenna's got a trick with a straw and apparently people can do this when we're able to go out to restaurants again. Yes, once you're, I mean, remember when you'd get your straw at a restaurant, you know, back when things were normal? You can actually do some pretty cool science with it. So you kind of crunched it and now you're kind of like putting water on it yes and can you guys see me i am seeing me yep i'm seeing brian too let's see let's switch over to brenna because brenna's doing the interesting stuff i'm kind of boring Ooh. and brenna's putting water on it. what it's getting big again 
Yes, it is. Oh so my these gosh. fibers get bent in this straw cover. Oh, and, then, and somebody says they've done this before. Oh my gosh. And here we go. Here oh my one. gosh. And we made it get bigger again. That is awesome. Uh, the water expands it. I do it all the time. The little fibers inside there, you <laughs> plump them up. And then Maude has got another thing to show us. This is something with toothpicks. And Maud looks like she's made a little bit of a straw, but it's kind of a crunched star. Oh yeah, I have, I just break the toothpicks right in the middle, leaving a little bit there, and I'm going to bunch them all like that up in the middle, and I'm just going to put some water on them. Ooh. Oh, and that looks like oh. putting a little bit of water in the center, and what are the toothpicks doing? So the toothpicks are moving outward, and if I had done it a little bit better they'd be making a little star shape oh my gosh and the star is plumping up so i'm going to say folks give that a shot and then next brenna has got some balloons over there and if we have balloons at the end of the holiday party and we need to get rid of them quickly brenna what do you got oh my gosh this is special cleaner and it's citrus all right yes or dissolve, dissolve it, it. It's dissolve it and the idea is this stuff will not only dissolve like messes, it could also dissolve balloons. And while we're waiting for those things to go, and we will hear those go, Maude has got a pencil in a balloon. Oh my gosh, Maude's going to take a pencil in a balloon. Balloons are pointy, though. Our pencils are pointy. And this one's very pointy. <laughs> all righty. We all know what's going to happen to this one. And Maude takes this pencil and puts it in the end of the balloon, and she, you dipped it in something, Maude. What did you dip it in? I dipped it in some oil. She stuck the pencil in the balloon? Oh my gosh. And somebody put here, I've done this before you go through the, the thick parts of the balloon. Oh my gosh. You're just, right. We can't teach them you anything are right. Anymore. You are right. And, and these balloons are just not wanting to go down. They don't want to die. They don't want to die yet. The balloons. I, I guess. Okay. We're going we're gonna to let that stay. We'll, we'll throw them over here. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing we're going to do. Oh my gosh. That one popped over where Maud was, which is kind of awesome. But let, we'll get the balloons a second. And then Brenna has got, we did some things before with loops, and this is an effort to summon Mickey Mouse, right? Yes. So I can summon Mickey Mouse using bubbles, a loop, and a string. Oh my gosh, we're summoning Mickey Mouse. So if I pour some bubble solution in here, I can make a bubble loop. Oh my gosh. And then we're going to look at a video of this because this is a that little fiddly. She makes a bubble loop and then we can put some strings in there, little circular loops of string. And there's our, there's our nice bubble film. And this is kind of amazing. If you put in a piece of string, and it looks like, Brenna, you had that in the soap so it got nice and soapy. Yes. Lay it in there. Oh my gosh. And that's a circle. So we're Come like on, one Mickey. third of the way to Mickey. And then another circle looks like you got an ear. He just needs another ear. One more ear, and I think we're Mickey is with us. Boom! There it is. There There's it our little Mickey Mouse shape right here. That is kind of an awesome, awesome thing. And now Maude is going to show us a magical way to make strings repel each other. So she has, you have a pan of water and a couple of strings. And what's next? I'm just going to take my finger and put them right in between the strings. What? And it pushes them apart? Your finger does? Oh, yeah. It's magic. Okay, what was going on? What was on Maud's finger to make that happen? Let's see what folks are saying. She dipped her finger in something. Oh, somebody says soap. Soap. Oh, my gosh. Yep. You little Enough. scamps. It is a soap thing. This is something that you can try. And now we have a grand finale for you folks. We had a lot to squeeze in this episode, but here's our grand finale. What we're going to do... Folks have been asking for us to do a show on animals. And in fact, next week's show is going to be on animals. But we want your contributions. We want videos of animals doing cool things. And we'll explain how it works. And Brenna made us a sample video. Let's fire this up. Brenna has chickens. And chickens do something kind of awesome with their head. Oh, and look at this. Brenna's moving the chicken. But Brenna, what's the head doing? It's not really moving. <laughs> Chickens are kind of neat because they keep their heads in 
pretty much the same location no matter what direction you Oh my gosh. In. So we're throwing in a link in the chat. And if you go to that link, we want you to make and upload a video for us. And next week's show is going to be on animals. It's our last show before the holidays. And we want to bend to popular will here. Folks said they want to show on animals. we got to show on animals. And we want to have you make videos of your animals. And we're going to put together a show with some of our animals doing cool things, but some of your animals doing cool things. And we want to get as many contributions as we can. So if you have a pet or if you have a barnyard animal or you ride horses and they do something cool, make a video, send it to us using that link. That's our show next week. It's going to be the animal show with Little Shop of Physics Live. Thanks to Brenna. Bye guys. Thank you so much. Thanks to Maude. Bye everybody. Thanks to Adam and Patrick for running all the tech behind the scene. And somebody said, when do we start next year? January 8th is going to be our first show. We'll post that on our website. Thank you all so much. And we will see you next week for the Animal Show.